Okay, why don't we why don't we just pray and then we'll start, right? Let's pray. Um, and um, now before praying, just want to read from excuse me, Proverbs chapter three, Proverbs chapter three and verse one. Okay, it says, "My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands." For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Okay. So it starts with uh, the Lord saying, don't forget. In other words, he's saying, remember my law. But he says, let your heart keep my commands. Okay? Let your heart keep my commands. So what does that mean? That means, you know, the commands that he's giving, the instruction that he's giving, uh, the instructions of the Lord, the word of God. So he's saying that, let your heart keep it. Okay, Let it not be just something in the mind, but let it be from the innermost being. Okay? So I was just thinking, you know, like <clears throat> um, the word of God, the instructions of God, and the way we look at it and the way we keep it, the way we obey, does it change from place to place? Like, does it change before us? You know, here we are in Bible college, maybe doing this course, and therefore we need to look into the word, we study, and etc. But if we are out of this, okay, if we are out of this place, if we are going somewhere, you know, if, maybe if you're not in this country or some other country, some other city. Okay. How will you keep the word of God? Right? How will you keep the word of God in the sense? Will you obey the word with the same intensity, with the same passion? Right? Will you treat the word of God with the same respect and honor? Or will that change? Right? Because, yeah, the writer of this prog says, let your heart keep my commands, right? Keep meaning, protect, obey, follow through. Let your heart, from your heart you do it. Okay? Not because somebody's watching, not because oh, somebody told me and if I don't do this, then, you know, they are going to punish me, right? Not because of all that, but from within, you make a decision and you keep my commands. Okay, we're looking at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, and right? Let your heart keep my commands. And then it's talking about what will happen, what will be the overflow of that, right? It says, length of days, long life, peace, they will add to you. And then he talks about mercy and truth. And, uh, you know, let that also be there. And um, you will find favor with God. And you will have favor with so this is the overflow of that. This is the outflow of that. But it all starts from the place of our heart keeping our keeping the commandments of God. Okay. So just ask yourself, you know, if I go from here, right? If I once I finish this course, if I go back, or maybe you know, I'm I'm not. Uh, you know, some of you might be involved in ministry. Some of you may not be involved in ministry, right? In the sense, full time ministry or so. Will your heart till still keep the commands of God? Will your heart still? That's that's the question we need to ask. Will I still keep the word of God from my heart, no matter where I am, no matter where, what, how old I am, what season of life I am in? You know, most of us are single here, you know, like we are married and and all that. No matter what season, no matter where I am, no matter which place. Will I still keep the word of God, obey the word of God from my heart? Not because somebody told me, not because somebody will be disappointed, not because you know I will face some consequences. Will your heart keep the commandments of God? Right? Why don't we pray? Father, we thank you for this reminder from your word, this exhortation from your word, Lord. We thank you. Yes, Lord. Your desire is that each one of us, Lord, from our heart, obey and keep your words, your commands, your instructions, Lord, from our heart, Lord. 
and not because somebody's watching not because lord there could be consequences of not doing because of some authority over us but from within lord i pray for each one of us there will be this holy desire and passion no matter what season of life we could be going into or moving in lord that we will always highly esteem you your word the works of your spirit the instruction from your word father god always lord and let our hearts keep your word keep your commands and may we see the fruit of this lord long life and peace and favor with you and with others master yes lord we thank you lord help us to lord take that step and continue in doing so god by the power of your holy spirit in jesus master's name we pray amen amen okay so okay so is it god's will to prosper us yes so why do you think is god's will to prosper us sorry we are his children what else why do you think it's god's will to prosper us why do you think it's god's will to us that's because it's god's okay yeah because yeah because the bible says online in some yeah. Yeah. yeah online yes. folks you can put it on the chat okay well, asapu and friend why do you think it's it is god's will to prosper diksha and uh, diksha and smita huh sabita okay why my comes back to you why do you think it's yeah why do you think it's god's will it is god's will it is god's desire to prosper you because you need to be sure right these are like um very important questions yeah see we might have an understanding okay yeah i know that god wants to prosper me it, it is will that i should you know i should thrive and have success and increase in all areas of my life uh but you know our answer should have a biblical base right that's the foundation so it should be there based on the word of god not because hey, this is what i learned in this subject or you know, this is what so and so told me or it sounds like a good idea <laughs> it has to be based on so yeah diksha and sabita why do you think it is god's will god things is its thoughts are always good yeah so uh, we see that in jeremiah uh, 21 right or 29 11 29 11 see that is thoughts are always good he wants to prosper us uh, it's not for calamity right another scripture to look at is john 10 10 right the lord see, jesus said that i am the good shepherd the enemy comes to steal kill destroy steal is to take away what is rightfully yours kill put an end to you and to your dreams destroy you know completely decimate but the lord what did the lord say but i have come that they may have life and life in its fullness or abundance right so yeah so these are some verses okay um little brad says 35 yeah some 35 27 right god takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants so we see that over and over and over again this this thing coming through through the pages of scripture okay lucy he created us to be blessed uh, to prosper rule and reign gertrude he loves us um lucy again genesis 1 26 28 okay so not to sure what that verse is um okay so he uh, um bless them right he made them he bless them and he said be fruitful he multiply etc okay and so you know we have all these proofs on the pages of scripture but we just need to make it ours right 
be very sure that uh, okay this is what it is and one very important thing is we go back to the cross right we go back to the cross what happened on the cross what happened? you can't look into your notes now <laughs> what happened on the cross huh exchange offer yeah <laughs> the greatest exchange right the greatest exchange and scripture says that for our sake he became poor that we through his poverty might become rich right something happened on the cross he took the source of whatever was creating confusion he took the source of whatever was destroying he took the source of whatever was killing right that's what he did upon himself and what is that source what is it called what is it called that source of whatever was creating confusion death bringing about death bringing about disease bringing about poverty what was that the source of that what is it called huh yeah but what is that what did he take on himself huh yeah but Uh, what was causing that source of poverty the source of sickness the source of sin sorry yeah yeah but but on the cross he took the source source meaning the the starting point what was causing the sin what was causing the sickness what was causing the disease and so on so he took that upon himself so what is that called huh sorry yeah infirmities now what was causing the infirmity the sin hmm? yeah diksha sin i think uh, somebody given and said something what is that three letter word yeah three letter word huh? sin in english yeah exactly what does the bible say you know you go to romans Romans in the book of Romans, we see that um, sin entered man, and death because of sin. Correct? Okay. Romans five verse twelve. Therefore, just as through man one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus. death spread to all men because all sin yeah romans 5:12 right so sin entered and uh, so we should never forget this you know when it comes to uh, you know maybe we're talking about healing and we're talking about healing and deliverance and and everything else salvation you know this is the source what was causing the damage the lord took upon himself he took sin upon himself In fact, uh, Second Corinthians five, verse twenty-one. You no, know, we are going a little away from the subject, but still, um, Second Corinthians five and verse twenty-one. What does it say? For he, yeah, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Right. So that happened on the cross. yeah so this is what happened so on the cross he exchanged he reversed romans again romans 6 talks about how he destroyed the body of sin so so all this is very important when we even consider you know prosperity and, and success and and all these things it's very important because this is it he, we we normally when we look at the cross we think of it in terms of forgiveness right forgiveness um like being saved from eternal death right and it's a very important thing you know it's a big part of it yes but also when we consider the word sozo what is sozo salvation right it also includes forgiveness deliverance um uh, general well-being peace right so this is what happened on the cross Okay, so if you say, okay, I know it's God's will to prosper me, 
right? And when you pray for someone and say, God, prosper this person. You know, this person is struggling, prosper this person. We should have faith in our hearts, right? And we should know that, hey, this is what God wants. This is what God wants for that person. Right? And uh, so that's the thing. Okay, so it is God's will, yes, to prosper us. And uh, yeah, I see a lot of responses here. Sin, sin, sin. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, so so that's the thing. Okay, so let's continue. So um, last class we were looking at some of the principles, right? Principles of um, you know financial stewardship principles that we were looking at. For we looked at the hindrances, and we were looking at uh, principles. So uh, one of the things that we saw was that. We honor God with our finances, and therefore, we do what God wants us to do. And the principles that He's laid out in Scripture about finances, about money, right? So we looked at offering, we looked at tithe, we looked at giving to the poor. Okay, so um, so we looked at tithes. Okay, so we saw that it's it's something that was established in Scripture by the Lord before the law was introduced before the law came so there's no you know there's no reasoning that okay tithing is part of the is part of the law and now that there's a fulfillment of the law by the lord now the law is done away with we don't have to keep the law in its you know in that sense so i don't have to tithe we see that tithing happened before much before that right abraham gave tithes to melchizedek isaac was there and uh, when isaac tithes of uh, whatever was the produce um, he, we see that it was about 300 or 400 years before the law was introduced through Moses. Okay, so we understand that it's part of the covenant and it's not part of the law. Right? And so we also saw that certain things came to an end because of the cross. Right? What are those things that came to an end that we no longer do because of the cross? Like if some, some people would say, okay, after the cross, you know, we are living in the new dispensation. So after the cross, there's no requirement to tithe. So yes, certain things came to an end at the cross. So what are those that came to an end because of the cross? Sorry? Sacrifices, yes. Blood sacrifice came to an end at the cross. We looked at the book of Hebrews and we saw that, okay, he is that perfect sacrifice right on the cross jesus was a perfect sacrifice his blood was shed for us therefore there no longer need to be any other sacrifice after the cross right? that's something that we saw okay. similarly we also see that you know access to the holy of holies right we saw okay once a year the high priest would go only he can go not everyone to the holy of holies so access to god Right, was through the this person who represented people to God and God to people. That's a high, that's a priest, right? So he he used to do that. Right now, after the cross, what happened? We also saw that at the crucifixion itself, at the time of the crucifixion, when when Jesus died on the cross, something very significant happened at the temple in Jerusalem. That the veil, the curtain that was there, which was separating. The holy of holies and the, you know the other place that was torn that was split right from top to bottom it was not as if somebody cut it from here and tore it and and also they they say that the curtain was very thick it was almost like a wall this thick huh? yeah so it is it's a thick thing so it split from it was torn from top to the bottom right so as god was saying that you know, now there is no more barrier now there is no more, uh, nothing to prevent us from going in to the, and having access to it. And that's what we see in Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 4. Where he said that now we have come boldly to the throne of grace because he has actually, through a, you know, he, he's actually made a way for us to come. So we say that, okay, now that access by, the, by one person on behalf of others, let us stop. Now I can go freely. I can go have access to the I have access to the father that's top what about musical instruments we're praising God you know some people have that argument no like in the Psalms 
he says okay use these musical instruments drums and trumpet and cymbals and so on but uh, you know in the new testament we are supposed to worship only in spirit and in truth like no more musical instruments but then we don't see any explicit instruction like that right that this is stopped in fact when we read the book of revelation we see that okay there are some trumpets that are mentioned there there is a harp that is mentioned there so revelation i think 12 talks about the harps of god and you know time and again there is singing so we see all these things mentioned so we we see that okay there is no explicit instruction saying this has to stop okay so also with typing okay so we're taking some time to look into these verses because it's it's quite important right so also uh, when it comes to typing okay let's look at a few scriptures um and it's specifically talking about what the lord is saying okay if you look at matthew chapter um yeah matthew 23 verse 23 okay matthew 23 and verse 23 okay so this is the lord who's correcting the scribes and the pharisees right so this is what he says um he's actually in matthew 23 he's actually giving a very strong disciplining correcting word to the pharisees and scribes you know he says who unto you it's opposite of blessing you know, some bad things are going to happen so he's saying verse 23 who to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin now these are like herbs and you know uh, seeds he says you pay a tithe of that even that you pay a tithe okay and then what does he say but i have neglected the weightier matters of the law which is which are justice and mercy and faith okay so what is the what is the lord saying see you you are with your tithing according to the old you know uh, the old dispensation and even according to the law you are tithing you are tithing these things right uh, all these anise and cumin and all that you are tithing okay so then the lord is saying what have you neglected what are you neglecting not doing just look into the verse what is he, what is he saying justice mercy faith you know these you have forgotten you're doing this ritualistic tithing but you have forgotten these things right justice and mercy and faith you have forgotten it and it's very interesting what the lord is saying next what is he saying these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone the last part of that verse these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone what does that mean it means that hey mercy and truth and faith is also something that you should have done along with the other things matthew 23 verse 23 right so without leaving the others undone is you ought to have done so so what what is the lord saying the lord is saying hey is is in in another place i think it's uh, uh, matthew 21 uh, 22 21 or matthew 5 17 where the lord says you know i have come to fulfill the law and the prophets matthew 5 17 i do not think i came to destroy the law or the prophets i did not come to destroy but to fulfill so the lord jesus came as a fulfillment of the law and the prophets you know in one way you know all the prophecies that were made to were made about the messiah he came as the fulfillment of those prophecies right and he also walked righteously and he came to fulfill the law and the prophets okay so that is something that we see so so the lord himself says okay this is something that you have you should have done without leaving the others under and yeah verse 24 yeah so verse 24 it says blind guides who strain, strain out a gnat and swallow a camel down. yeah so in the sense uh, strain out a gnat in the sense okay a gnat is just a small insect so maybe we want to drink something and it's fallen into that into the cup or something you strain it out you know you, do, you don't want that to Uh, impure make it impure you strain out it but is this an hyperbole means means is exaggeration so he's saying okay but you swallow the camel which is there so in other words um he's saying you know this bigger things you have actually forgotten 
you know, these small things, you know, you're just so microscopic, you, you're very careful to identify it and make sure that, you know, that should be taken out or that should be done. But these bigger things of, he's talking about ju justice and faith and mercy, and he's saying, these big things you have actually left it. So that is what it says. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, um, Let's look at Hebrews 7. Okay, so Hebrews 7 also, you know, if, uh, if we are saying that, okay, well, the Lord Jesus, he spoke, he did, but this was his earthly ministry, and now he's, you know, this was, even then it was before the cross. Okay, uh, if, we, if somebody is saying like that, you know, so um, we go to Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 8. Okay, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8, um, the writer of Hebrews is talking about, Melchizedek, he's talking about tithing that happened during the time of Melchizedek. Um, you know, he's referring to all that. And in verse 8, he says, Here, mortal men receive tithes. Okay. So here, mortal men receive tithes. But there, he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Okay. So, so even in the book of Hebrews, he's talking about he's talking about the old and he's talking about the new. He's talking about the old dispensation and the new, where he's saying that, yeah, um, you know, he's saying that this is what it is. Even now, you know, tithes here yeah, men receive it, yeah, on behalf, but there it is actually received by um, you know uh, by God Himself. So, so we see that. Okay. So just to look at. Um, um, just for us to clarify that tithing is something that is relevant and it is part of the New Testament. It's part of our, it's a joy for us to give. Right? And as we see, um, God loves a cheerful giver. It is not out of compulsion, compulsion or it is not out of uh, you know necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. Second Corinthians nine, we saw that. You know what should be the heart of the giver. Now, some some of us may have a question, right? Hey, I don't have enough. No, like so. So we're saying, you know, whatever I'm getting, it's just enough to pay the bills. Okay. Sometimes we we have that. You know, I'm getting five thousand. This much, this much, this much. Everything goes rent, everything, and I don't have anything left, right? So how can I give the tithe? What is the answer? What do you think? If somebody asks you, Pastor Sagar, I have a question. So someone comes and says, I have this struggle. See, I want to give. But the reality is that this is the problem. What do we tell them? Manage your expenses. Manage your expenses. Mm. Then plan for how much a portion you can give. If you are not able to give the tithe, what you are earning, the 10% uh, of the earning. Mm. At least uh, you should uh, decide this is the portion which I am going to give. Very good. So, so we're saying that this is out of our relationship with God, right? It is, it is not out of fear. It is not out of compulsion that hey, this this person is telling me, and it is out of our relationship with God, right? So, well, this is what it is. This is reality. Maybe you are not at a place. You are not even at a place of faith to say, okay, out of the five thousand, I'll give that five hundred, right? And uh, is 500 one tenth? Yeah, okay. So 10%. I'll give that 500 and then I'll, you know, I'll see what I can do. Maybe that person is not in that place of faith. He's talking about all these. Fine. So the best thing to do is to encourage that person. Or you could be that person where, you know, say that it's fine. You decide. Right now, you're in this difficult place. You decide. You choose between you and God. What is it? Either you can test God and say, God, you know, I'm doing this by faith. You know, make sure that everything is met. But if you're not at that place, you choose and say, God, right now, today, I'm not in that place to give one tenth God. But 
what I can, I'm doing. Take me to that place where I can give one tenth and even more. Right? So we can pray that prayer, saying, God, you take me to that place. I want to come to that place. I know that all this is yours. I want to come to that place where you can, where I want to cheerfully give that one tenth and even more. Okay? Because you know, we read about So we read about uh, you know people who, who are who are like reverse tithers. You know, have you heard? Right. So these are people who tithe eighty percent or ninety percent of the income and live on the ten percent. Reverse tithers in the sense, maybe you know, uh, like I don't know if they are what kind of uh, business or something that they're involved in, but then they decided that hey, this is a um, you know heard of B A M or business as mission. So they're saying, okay, whatever comes to me, I'm going to live on this 10%. That's enough for me, right? That's enough for me. Or oh, there's 20%. This will meet my expenses. But the rest, I'm going to give it. You know, it need not be tithe, but it can be for missions or for the you know kingdom work and, and all those things. So so that's that's also there. That's because that's coming from a relationship with God. Okay. Okay, so um, you know when you say okay, what what happens when we tithe? You know, um, Malachi three talks about that. Okay, so let's go to Malachi three, and um, Malachi three, ten. Okay, it says bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven. And pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Okay, so this is God's promise to the one who tithes, and this is the old covenant. Yeah, this is the old covenant. Yeah. So are we in the new covenant? Yes. And what does the Bible talk about the new covenant? This is a better covenant made of better promises. So, which means there's so much more, so much um, better things. Which are coming out of that covenant with God, our covenant, with God, right? So that's something that we see that, yeah, this is this is something. It's part of the covenant, and this is what the promise of God is. Okay. Then, what do we see? We see in verse eleven. Okay, verse eleven, he says, "And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field." Says the Lord of hosts. So this is again part of the covenant. The Lord is saying, I am your protector. Right? I am your protector. I am your defender. And I'm the one who is going to cause the devourer. It says, I will rebuke the devourer. Right? I will cause the devourer to go away and uh, not come near. And he said, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. So what is it? What is it saying? What the Lord is saying is, you know, here's something that you're doing, you know. Agriculture is what that society was involved in. So this is what you're doing: you're sowing and you're waiting for the thing, and then, then it, it there's there's not a good harvest. You know, something comes, something calamity, something happens, and and the Lord is saying, you know, that this devourer, you know, I'll I'll make sure that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. So it's directly related to the work of your hands. The work of your hands, you know, whatever you put your hands to, to work. And in today's case, it could be whatever you're in, involved in, whatever work you're involved in professionally, whatever you know, business, whatever line of work, whatever business you are involved in, right? As a as a human being, as a person. So the Lord is saying that you know, I try me in this, right? He's saying that I will do this. I will be the protector. I will so that He will not destroy the fruit of your ground. And um, so we talk about the material blessings and the Lord being the protector and so on. So this part this comes as part of the covenant, and this is the old covenant. So when we look at the new covenant and the new dispensation, how much more, right? Okay, okay. So we looked at any questions, further questions or doubts on tithing? Yeah. Pastor, this related to tithe. Actually, I heard an interpretation mm. of uh, the widow who gave uh, all whatever she, she had. Yeah. So, the pastor interpreted the scripture like that. To make a story short, he gave the conclusion. Uh, 
about this uh principle or this truth in scripture okay because so one needs to know so one needs to be taught so yes that's fine but um i think it stops with that the rest is up to the person and their relationship with god and how god works in their heart so that's the thing so um because if we if we put emotional pressure right to give for a cause or give to the uh that's then we are doing we're not doing the right thing because we don't see that in scripture it's like even paul very clearly says you know this was actually in, in second corinthians 9 when we see he says he's talking about something that they had planned one year ago that congregation the uh, believers corin this was something that they will give to the churches in macedonia the poor in macedonia this was something they talked about planned one year ago okay so he could very well say you know you guys you know you we promised it come on now come on now you know pay up no but even there he says that you as you purpose not out of necessity not out of compulsion you give cheerfully you know so because god is able to make all things abound towards you that you have sufficient for yourself and for every good work so that's the so what happens is this actually takes a lot of pressure off the person no more are they giving out of guilt but out of conviction in the holy spirit and uh, and that's how it should be right so yeah. i'm sure the pastor was very sincere you know in saying that you can give more right uh, but um, yeah so so one other small question yeah. i wanted to know your thoughts and suggestion for the same uh, sometimes uh, we've heard people you know they preach but uh, when someone is running a little is correct when, when someone, someone is having is a little handsome yeah easy to give one thing but when the same person is earning much more then the logical thinking on comes in mm. so as a pastor i hope is it that you address it you he still go and preach about i think it's right yeah we don't try to compromise mm. on a... true yeah so it's uh, and that's why you know bible also is very clear it's 1/10 10% so so no matter what the the quantum of amount or the income is it's, it's just a tenth of that so i think it's easy if we just make up our mind and say okay this belongs to god you know this is not coming in this belongs to him and that's the first thing that i'm going to do to use the tithe and uh, and of course over and above that as the lord lays on my heart i'm going to give so i think it's um, if we make up our mind then it's easier so we don't you don't worry about what the amount is it could be it could be running into lakhs or it could be a few you know hundreds uh, whatever it is we will just we because we've made up our mind already so i think that's that way it's easier yeah okay so so um so these are some yeah so yeah so that's one question no that so, so the question was where should i give my uh, give the tight Okay, so I think that's something that we addressed earlier on, in last class, where you know, where, so, see, in the Old Testament, it was easy, one storehouse, one place, everybody would come and bring their tithes there, and and logistically, even though it was a problem, there were some things that they would do. You know, they would sell the produce, you know, if they are, and then change it into money, and then do it all. So all that was there. But uh, now. 
you know, we're talking about if you're looking at one, you know, it's not one storehouse, but it's different local churches. So whichever church that you are part of, where you are fed spiritually and where you are, you're part of that body. You know, you're receiving, you're, you're also serving. That would be a good, yeah, good way to decide. Okay, this here again. Give my tithes. So, some people are saying that we should use your tithe to fulfill the needs of a poor and needy. Well, mm, I know. So, so some people have that kind of a thing that okay, you know, you see the needs of people outside. You see that there are you know people in poverty and uh, use that. But uh, the thing is, yes, Bible does talk about giving. Bible does talk about helping the poor. And we should do that. But that does not come from the tithe. It comes from, it's over and above that, uh, offerings and uh, you know, offerings to the church. Or you know. So it, it's hard on your flesh. And you say, how much can I give? Well, one, one small, uh, does it answer your question? Yeah. So, so it is tough. It is difficult. See, one, one small this thing is, um, see, when we were, um, uh, I think we were, yeah, we were kind of newly married, and uh, uh, we are living in Bangalore, and it was tough, you know, um, tough to this thing. I think I, I don't know if I shared this <laughs> with you guys, but um, it was tough financially. So you know, so we would just plan and say, okay, this much for tight, this much for this, and then everything, you know, that's how it was. So uh, what happened was there was a neighbor uh, who was in debt. Okay, so the neighbor's daughter, she used to come, and my wife used to teach her. Some English and simple math and all this small one. So she came and said, you know, they uh, um, they have a problem, and uh, I think actually it was a house help who told you know they have a problem, and the problem was that it was a major issue. Uh, they were running a small bakery, and they had made some bad decisions. It wasn't debt, right? And so um, the the creditors were even saying, you know, you you need to, you know, it can be very ugly, right? So they were planning to sell some organs, like kidney. You know, I'll do it and then get some money and then pay the thing. So we heard it. Okay, we said, okay, let's do something. So we, I thought, you know, okay, I'll, let me ask some friends and do that. But very clearly, the Lord said, you give. Okay, so I was challenged. You know, I, I still remember the place where he spoke, and it was a very, you know, very clear. Uh, impression on my heart, you give. And the thing is, I had only that much money. Okay, So it was already tough, already tight. And I had only this much money, which I was saving up because my wife was actually expecting. And I thought, OK, I'll buy one second-hand car, second-hand Fiat. So second-hand Fiat those days, I think it was some 20,000 or something. You know, it's like really old. I wasn't even thinking of how much money I will put on petrol and you know, repairs and so on, maintenance. I just thought, okay, I have this much money I have, I'll buy it a second hand Fiat car. Okay. So I was saving up for that, and the Lord said, You give. And this was the exact amount which they needed. Okay, so I was like, God, how do I do it? And finally, I said, Okay, God, I'll give it. So I went, withdrew, gave the amount, and uh, the family, they, they, I, I don't know what they did. After some time, we never heard of them. They said, actually, we'll give back the money. We never heard of them. They moved house. They didn't tell us. That was a, that I've not seen them. It's been many years, you know, maybe 25 years or something. We not, I've not seen them. So they, that was it. But the Lord said, you give. Okay, so the thing is, sometimes it's very difficult, right? So when, when it comes to helping others, helping the poor, and then we were already giving, you know, the tithes and everything. And so we might have that, you know, argument or some that reasoning within us. Um, but then we just need to go with God. Okay, So till now, I don't know how that happened. But the Lord enabled us to buy a new vehicle. Now, I, I'm, I'm still thinking, you know, how did that happen, you know? So I was working, incentives and all that, you know, uh, I was in sales and so I don't know how it happened, but the Lord enabled us to buy a new vehicle where I was thinking of buying one old 
second hand vehicle right the lord enables us to do that right so the lord is a debtor to no man right so you know he doesn't owe us anything so he will make sure that he will repay and he's true to his promises now we we may not see it immediately but the lord will ensure that he'll never you know keep you in want especially in, when it comes to these things right so yeah so just wanted to share that which is also a part of you know the next topic which is listen to the holy spirit any any other doubts you have is it good to just i have a question yeah so it is uh, is it good to preach about tithing in church yes ah uh, see for example um there are some churches where the people have been grown up in church right generation after generation they would have you know been born and i think they know okay what and every sunday you know there's this offering time so in the children's church also you know there's offering time so they know okay in church at this time there'll be offering i need to give they may not understand why but as they grow they understand okay but the fact is that suppose there is a new you know first generation believer you know, coming and then they don't know and right? just like how you teach on everything else in the bible you know you will teach about salvation you will teach about renewing of the mind you will teach about the holy spirit gifts of the spirit everything just like how we teach everything else in the bible we can we need to teach them about this aspect of giving and tithing and so on actually what yeah. one is incident happened in our church one pastor came from outside and was preaching and suddenly he came in topic of tithing and he said we should keep to this church one uh, all the believer were there uh -huh. full family uh, they left church oh. from that that sunday and we got to know that they are saying that it's our money wherever we can want to use we will use mm -hmm. so, so the thing is you know to look into the word to teach them from the word and say okay this is the attitude with which you give finally it's your decision yes it's true that it's your money but this is what the word of god says and uh, well if you choose to you give otherwise so there's no you know there's no compulsion uh, etc but this is what it is it comes out of uh, your relationship with god your walk with god and so when people are taught from the word when they look into the word and the heart with which god says this then there will be no you know misunderstanding like this yeah because there are you know there are different ways to teach it you know one we can say you know you better give it otherwise bad things are going to happen you know you put fear in people's heart now that's not what god wants you know yes it is a truth but it comes from a place of relationship this is the truth and you have to decide i as a pastor my responsibility is to teach the truth but you as a you know as a believer growing up in the lord you decide it's between you and god you decide and so that you know frees up the person you know they are at liberty to talk to god and decide and then give it yeah okay um okay so i think we'll close here uh, i'm sorry i can't hear your throat um i think uh, there's some pastor can you hear me maybe we'll take that question sorry i can't hear you are unmuted um just one one second we're just trying to see if we can push up the volume here sorry about that yeah can you try now please can you hear me pastor yeah yeah can you just push it up yeah this this volume this uh, ox volume yeah say something please can you hear me yeah please go ahead uh pastor i wanted to ask now once uh, you have uh, paid the tithe for the full amount uh do you have to pay again uh, tithes on the interest that you get <laughs> okay so so we okay so the so scenario is you getting a monthly income and you also have savings right so that's how we understand it i think so, no pastor suppose yeah. uh, let's i when i retired i paid tithe for the full amount i received okay and then uh, the income i get on that money do i have to pay tithe again on so, that so you're saying that interest is the income that you're getting yeah right okay so yeah in the sense if that is your income if that is your monthly or you know once in six months if that is your income yeah so whatever is your increase 
you can you can choose to give a tithe of that yeah okay yeah because that's your income now right so you're a tithe person and this is your source of income so and you can you know as an act of worship you can use it uh, to worship god because, with your... uh, pastor had asked uh, a pastor previous church he said once you pay there's no need to pay tithes again it should be offering it is out of your mm -hmm. own will that you pay because uh, you have paid tithe and like you get your salary monthly yeah. and then you pay the tithes and then again you don't pay tithe on the remaining money or the uh -huh. way you invest so that's what mm -hmm. he explained to me so i just wanted to make sure right 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 so you you can decide gertrude you know there's no hard and fast but if you feel yeah. that okay this is a source of income that you're getting and you want yeah. to um you know since you're getting a source of income and if you feel that okay i can do this uh, to honor god go ahead do it okay pastor thank you, know? you. okay hey okay, thanks then for pointing that out okay we'll stop here we'll uh, meet again next class right god bless bye bye